In this chapter, we will be introducing the concepts of permutations and combinations. In this lesson, we will be using perms and comms to calculate probability. Okay, so the probability of an event okay, is calculated by determining the number of favorable outcomes or the number of successful outcomes. Okay, the number of, of possible successes there over the number of the, sorry the total number of possible outcomes. Now, one of the things that that I struggled with when I was first learning about probability here is is really getting my head wrapped around this favorable outcome or successes. Okay, uh, because when we were talking about the the probability of an event happening, I would always get myself wrapped around thinking, well, what, like what if it doesn't happen? Okay, like if you've got let's say two events happening together, like. What's the probability of, let's say, flipping a, a one on a, or rolling a one on a, on a die and then rolling it again and getting a three? My, my mind, I would get a little bit hung up on the fact, well, what if I didn't roll a one at the, on the first die there? When, when the truth is, when we're talking about probability, we're always assuming success. You always work with the assumption that you've, you've succeeded here. Don't worry about what happens if you don't. That's not that's not the issue. You could ask the question, what's the probability of an event not happening? But then that's a different question altogether. And then we would consider uh, a successful event would, would look different. Okay. So it's just the number of successful uh, events or the number of, of events that we would consider successful over the total number of possible events. Uh, when you talk about probability or when you write it, okay, it's either going to be a fraction or a decimal. And if it's a decimal, it's always going to be between 0 and 1, okay? And if it's a fraction, the numerator is always less than the denominator, un unless they're equal to each other, okay? In which case, the, the probability would be 1, okay? Just something to consider. Now, we'll take a look at some examples and how they relate to what we've just been learning about permutations and combinations. Jane, Tim, and Mary are competing with seven other boys to be on the school's cross-country team. They all have an equal chance of winning a trial race. Determine the probability that Jane, Tim, and Mary will place first, second, and third in that order. Okay, so we're talking about the, the probability that Jane, Tim, and Mary finish here, first, second, and third in that order. So Jane was first, Tim is second, Mary is third. Now, that's there's only one way that that could possibly happen. Okay. Now, the question is, out of how many uh, ways could this race have completed, okay? Now, Jane, Tim, and Mary are competing with seven other, okay, seven other people, or seven other boys here. That means there's 10 people total. So we're looking at, at a group of 10 people. They're running this race, okay? Um, how many ways could three people win first, second, and third? Well, is that a, is that a permutation or a combination? And it should be pretty clear that that order is important here. So this is definitely a permutation. So that means there are 10 P3 different ways that that race could could finish in total. Now, go to the calculator and you'll see that, that uh, 7 P3 is going to be 720. And so now if we wanted to figure out what that was in a, in a decimal form here, this is going to be well, approximately, okay, I put a little dot over there for approximately because I'm going to have to round this. This will be 0 0.00, let's say, 1, 4 is my probability. Now convert that to a percent and you still only got 0.14% uh, that those three would, uh, would finish in that order. Determine the probability that a committee of three chosen at random from five girls and four boys has exactly two girls. All right, now this is a committee problem. And as we've seen in previous lessons here, order doesn't really matter on the committee as long as you're not specifying a position like president, vice president, secretary here. So order isn't an issue here. Now we're looking for the probability that you get exactly two girls. So in the numerator here, let's just take a look at the number of ways you could get exactly two girls. Well, there are five to choose from. We're going to choose two. And if we've chosen two, that means of the four boys that are out there, we've got to choose one to finish this committee of three. Now, that is... Uh, out of the total number of ways we could do this, well, there are nine people that we're going to choose from, and we just need a committee of three. So without any kind of restriction, it would be nine choose three. Put that all together, and the numerator will become 40, okay, over 84. Um, and then we can just simplify that actually fairly simply because they're, they're both divisible by four. Um, actually, I don't think there's much else to divisible by. That's going to give you 10 out of 21. Yeah, that's, that's as good as it's going to get. And that's approximately equal to, uh, what is that, 0 point, let's say, 4, 8. 
has a roughly 48% probability, 48% chance that that's going to happen. To win a new car, a contest is held. The word Saskatchewan is spelled out using letter tiles. They are then turned over face down and mixed up. The contestant, Sally, is asked to arrange the tiles in a row and turn them face up. If the row of tiles spell Saskatchewan, Sally wins the car. Determine the probability that Sally wins the car. Okay, well, to answer this question, we could, you could see this in a couple of different ways. One way that you might look at this is to look at this and say, okay, she's got to put together the, the letters in the word Saskatchewan. But you know what? She could, like how many different ways could she organize those letters and still get Saskatchewan? Well, you know what? There are two factorial ways she could have permuted those S's and it still would have worked. And there are three factorial ways she could have permuted the A's and that would work. So you might think of this as this is going to be two factorial, three factorial, out of the total number of ways that you could organize the letters in the word Saskatoon. And there are 12 of them. And so over 12 factorial. Now, that is going to be, what do we got here? Uh, 3 factorial is 6 times 2 is going to be 12. And then that would be over, well, 12 factorial is, is a huge number. That's 479 million, uh, what is that, 1,600. Divide that by 12. And this is still going to be 1 over 3, 9, 9, 1, 6, 8, 0. It's, sorry, 0, 0. That's, that's huge here. Or another way of thinking about it is um, if you want it, if you're kind of focused on that repetition here, you might think of it like this. There is one way out of, well, how many different ways can you, or sorry, I should say it like this, because yeah, it won't make sense unless I say it like this. How many unique or uh, permutations are there of the letters in the word Saskatchewan? Well, there are 12 letters in, this word, in the word Saskatchewan, two of which are S's, three of which are A's. This is the number of unique permutations of those letters. There's only one of those that I'm interested in. But if you divide by that fraction, you will get 2 factorial over 3 factorial, sorry, 2 factorial times 3 factorial over 12 factorial, which is exactly what we had just done originally here. So that's the answer that we're looking for. In a card game of Crazy 8s, players are dealt 8 cards from a standard deck of cards. Determine the probability that that card will contain exactly 7 hearts. Okay, well, let's just think about what's going on here. We've got a, we want to have exactly seven hearts in there. Well, how many hearts are there uh, in a standard deck? There are 13. And so to get exactly seven hearts, we would do seven choose, sorry, 13 choose seven. And we need an, another card here because we need eight cards here. Well, there are 39 other cards to choose from, and we only need to choose one out of all of those. Now, we're looking for the probability that this happens. So the total number of ways that we can do this to, without kind of restriction on that, would be 52 choose 8. Now when we plug this into the calculator, we'll get that the numerator here goes to 66,924. Uh, uh, but the denominator gets really big. It's, I believe it's 752,538,150. And actually when you, when you plug that in, uh, you will get uh, 0 0.00089 as our probability, as a highly unlikely uh, that that would happen. But um, yeah, anyway, but there you go. Just think of right now, our, our real focus here is on the combinations, using the combinations to produce that probability. Liz has 30 songs on her CD. 12 songs are pop, 8 are country, and 10 are rap. She generates a random playlist of 10 songs. What is the probability that half the songs are pop? Okay, so the let's look at exactly what's being asked of us here. What's the probability that half of the songs are pop? Okay, well, we've got 12 songs that are pop, and we only want 10 songs total. So 12 of them, sorry, five of them, five of those 12 show up in this list here. And then we've got 18 other songs, and we need five more. Now, this is out of a total of, we've got 30 songs. Choose five. Now, we're again, we're assuming that... Uh, that order doesn't really matter. We're just interested in in the songs being on the playlist, right? It's, it doesn't matter what order they, they, they come in. You should probably shuffle it anyway. So anyway, so our numerator is going to become, I believe that's 6,785,856 over, and what have we got here? I believe this is 
Yeah, 45,015. And just to get a sense of, of uh, what the decimal was, is here, because sometimes the fractions don't really communicate as much as the, the decimal here, this would be point, uh, whoops, sorry, not zero, it's just point two, uh, three. approximately point two three. So roughly 23%. A bag contains seven green and eight yellow marbles. Two marbles are selected without replacement. Determine the probability that A, both are green, B, one is green and one is yellow, and C, the first is green and the second is yellow. So if both are going to be green here, and we're not really concerned about the order here, what we're going to do is this is going to end up becoming, um, actually I'm going to give myself a little bit more room here because there's, come over here a little bit more. Uh, what we're going to get here, seven are green, so of those seven I need to choose two. Now the total number of ways that this can happen though, uh, there are, what have we got here? There are 15 marbles here, so without kind of restriction here, we've got 15 choose 2 here as our total in the denominator. And in our numerator here, this will be 21, the denominator will be 105, and as a decimal here, 21 divided by 105, let's go to the calculator, is 0 0.2. Actually, it's not even approximately 0.2, it's exactly 0 0.2. Okay, so a 20%. Okay, the chance that they're both going to be green here. Now, one is green and one is yellow. Well, again, if I don't care about order, then all I really need to do here is one is green, so seven choose one, one is green, one is yellow, eight choose one, and again, divided by 15 choose two. Now, seven choose one is seven, eight choose one is going to be eight, so that'll be 56 over 105. Uh, and actually, I'm just going to double check that there isn't some... Ah, yeah, there is. Okay, so this will reduce down to 8 over 15. Or actually, you know what? Approximately, approximately 0.5. Ah, it's hard to see there. Let me write that again. That's approximately equal to 0 0.5. Well, let's say 3, so you got a better sense of what's going on. So there's a 53% chance that you're going to get one green and one yellow. But compare that to this next one here that says the first is green and the second is yellow. This now becomes a permutation. Okay, so this would be 7 pick 1 times 8 pick 1. Now, this is going to be roughly the same as, as like this is still going to be 7 and 8 here, so the numerator is still going to be 56. It's really the denominator that's the issue here. Um, down here, this is going to be 15 pick 2. And so now I'm just going to go evaluate that, 15 pick 2 is 210, so this is going to end up being 56 over 210, then we'll, whoops, and we'll just quickly evaluate that. That's going to be approximately uh, 0 0.27, okay, as the probability here. As soon as we start identifying order, this becomes a probability, and then you'd have to replace those with permutations. Sorry. As soon as you, this is about order, sorry, this is always a probability question. As soon as you start mentioning order, it becomes a permutation is what I meant to say. Determine the probability that a four-member committee consists of two males and two females to be chosen from four females and five males. So in this case right here, we, not, we need to make sure that we have uh, two males and two females here. So based on the fact that I've got five males, that'll be five choose two and then four choose two. Order's not important. We're just coming up with a committee and there's no mention of position here. All over nine choose four. I'm gonna plug that into my calculator and simplify it and I'll get uh, 10 over 21 and that is going to be approximately equal to 0 0.48 or roughly 48 percent. There's a 48 percent chance that that's the kind of committee that's going to happen here. But just again remember that order's not important here so that makes this a combination. Only six people have tickets for two prizes. A person cannot win two prizes. What is the probability that David wins the first prize and Sean wins the second prize? So in this case right here, this actually is, is more of a, a permutation than anything else here because order is important here. If, if you change the order, okay, um, you, you change who gets what prize here, right? I mean, it, we've got David and Sean here as being first and second. Um, but, I mean, you can switch the order if, if that, and that, that is a different result if Sean comes first here. So, really, there's only one way this can happen. Now, you might think of it as there's one David, 
pick one, and there's one Sean, pick one. And But the truth is that's only going to be equal to one. This will be one times one. In the denominator, we'll have six, pick two, because order is important, and this will become one over 30. And just go to my calculator to get the decimal here. That's going to be approximately equal to 0 0.03. So it's like a 3% chance out of these six people that David will uh, get first and Sean will get second.